Shalom, shalom, shalom. In this lesson, I'm going to be addressing how we pretty much um, able to, the whole believing in, in the Lord's blood to where we're made sinless or we're forgiven. All right, the, you know, just pretty much explaining how that's the case for us, for those that may not see how that makes sense. So before I get going into this, this is um, Salakia. Kahalam la Yahawa Bahashim Yahweh Shai Wahawa Kakodash. And in double honor to the hopefully elect like elder apostles, slaves to be saved, Lord willing, start with the elder men at the Great Millstone Church, on down to the rest that may be out here and been out here under the same doctrine. On to the Akium that's here at this faction of this hopefully elect like assembly doing what they need to do. On to the rest of the Akium doing likewise, Shalom, and to the rest of you believers as well, and on this faith of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, who people who have been ignorantly and still ignorantly are calling God and Jesus Christ. Yahweh being the name of who people call God in ancient Hebrew, his true name and holy name, and Yahweh Shai being the name of who people call Jesus Christ in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. So I'm going to read Colossians 1. To show pretty much where this notion is 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 coming from, where this notion comes from. This is a uh, Colossians one and fourteen, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So we are, according to this, able to be forgiven just through some blood, just through the blood, not some blood, but just through the blood of Yahweh Shah. How? But you may not understand how. This is, is is possible. So I just need to believe on this blood because the blood is not physically in front of you anymore. But we're in a, in a time period now, which is 2,000 years um, post of the actual blood being spilled, still saying, still believing on that blood, still having it put to us that that same blood is what is going to have us forgiven ultimately. You know, when it's all said and done, all right, going into like when the times of refreshing come. All right, because we know we actually everyone is going to be judged when Yahweh Shah come back. All right, which he hasn't done yet. So that place of repentance, that opportunity of being able to be forgiven if you're a Hebrew Israelite for your sins, your transgression of the law. You know, and the Hebrew Israelites being the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians is believing on this blood that's, if you will, 2,000 years physically removed, you can say. But spiritually, it's here. So how is this possible? we read it again. Colossians 1 and 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So let's just prove that. I only grab that word. Redemption. This is the word for redemption in the Greek, Apollo Ultrosis. And it says the meaning is a releasing effected by payment of ransom, redemption, deliverance. Right. We ultimately able to be saved through believing on this blood that's physically 2000 years removed. It says liberation. Right being set free, procured by the payment of a ransom. All right. So it says also in the Stone's definition, figuratively, re riddance. Riddance, when riddance is going into what? When you get rid of something. Riddance, the action of getting rid of, as you see I have on the screen, the action of getting rid of a troublesome or unwanted person or thing. Yeah, and that's, your old man, that's, you know, the, 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 the sin that so do so easily beset us. All right. These bodies and, you know, the, these, these chains of darkness, man. So according to this, once again, 
in whom we have redemption. So being able to have all that through his blood, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, that's true. It's true. And another way we know this is going into that because when once again we go back into the word redemption, it says redemption, liberation procured by the payment of a ransom, which goes back to what? That go back to the law. That go back to Deuteronomy 28th chapter. And that also proves that this is this redemption is only for the Israelites. I'm going to actually prove that really quick. So, yeah, this goes back to the curses, which in which was placed upon the Hebrew Israelites, our so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians. You know, let's read it. This is Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. That's one of the curses. You jump up to the 15th chapter, 15th verse. It tells us this. This is Deuteronomy 15, 28 and 15. But it shall come, as you see in the header, it says curses for what? You see, disobedience. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So prophecies, it's dealing with prophecies. Certain things was going to befall the Hebrew Israelites for not listening, right? Unto the, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord Yahweh thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when we jump down to back to, you know what, let me see something real quick. Yeah. 68 says this is one of the curses then the lord and the lord yahweh shall bring thee into egypt again with ships by the way whereof i speak unto thee thou shalt see it no more again so you the Hebrew Israelites will go into slavery by slave ships which we know um a good portion of that is seen upon the so-called negroes west indians all right and you got other particular curses in here that completely is seen that are completely seen upon the rest of the Israelites, the northern kingdom, who came over to the place in which the so-called Negroes and West Indians, or the region that in which the so-called um, Negroes and so-called West Indians came, you know, voluntarily. So you, you primarily see that upon them. But you did have a lot of them get caught up in a trade, slave trade, you know, that triangular trade as well. Also, all right, once that took place they was grabbed up and dispersed but that's a whole nother thing so this is proof of all this has happened so this is proof uh you know that this happened but it says thou shalt see it no more again and there you shall be sold unto your your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you now when you go into the word buy it's like you buy the word buy says the word right there is quana and it says redeeming that's what that redemption see so no man is going to you see in the strongest definition redeem or purchase all right no man they wouldn't have it to give which is why they wouldn't be able to do it so this proved that that purchase and that redemption through the blood of Yahweh Shah is only for the Israelites because that's why the word, that's why it's called a redemption. His blood is said to be for the redemption, the redemption of who? You know, the, the those that were said to not be able to be redeemed by a man. All right. Because Yahweh Shah, he was the son of God. He wasn't just a man. Okay. So that just proves that that's that. And when you go to Deuteronomy, the first chapter, it tells you this. First first chapter, first verse, that these be the words that Moses spake unto all Israel. So, Colossians 1 and 14, in whom we have the redemption through his blood. See, even the forgiveness of sin. So that's talking that we as the Hebrew Israelites, us so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, because we fit those curses. This blood was spilt for the redeeming of the Israelites from those curses which was due to what a sinning all those curses happened upon us and are still upon us
by sinning. So we are still under the process of being able to what? Believe in that blood to ultimately be forgiven and redeemed. The redemption has not taken place. Manif it hasn't physically manifested. All right. We're halfway there by just believing. Okay. So I'm going to read that one more time. Colossians 1 and 14. In whom we have the redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, when we go to do, uh, Revelation 12, we you see how powerful that blood is. So we just, what, believe in it. We read it one more time. This We'll read this. This is a Revelation 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, um, I'm going to ask you to jump to the point, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the word of the slaki, the blood of the lamb. Which is who? Yahweh Shai, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. All right? When you read, let's get it. St. John 1 and 29. It say, Yahweh Shai is headed. Yahweh Shai, the Lamb of God. The next day, John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of the Father, which taketh away the sin of the world. So when we go back to Revelation 12 and 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, that's Yahweh Shai, and that they will have to be the ones in which that blood was spilt for and to be used and believed in, believed on, or claimed, if you will, who were us, which is us, us Hebrew Israelites, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Now, so this 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 blood this blood has this power. You hear about all the time. So do we just believe in the blood? Is it just completely just believing on the blood? All right. Is that is that um how it goes? So this Hebrews nine and twenty two was pretty much double doubled down on pretty much the 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 notion the fact that it is what's going to give us forgiving, but it's also some a quick history, you know. Check this is Hebrews 9 and 22 and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. So that that blood was once again proving that it's only for the Israelites because the Israelites were only given the law. That blood was spilt and it's to be believed on and it's used as the redemptor, you know, the, 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 the way to have that redemption take place. You know, that 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 purchasing, that buying back. All right. And almost all things are by the law purged, purged with blood. So that's why blood was spilt by Yahweh Shai, who people call Jesus Christ, to what? To purge. It says, and without shedding of blood is no remission. And the NLT, in fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Forgiveness of what? Sin. So that's why. This is 100% is for us. And Yahweh Shah has it came back. So we still are 2,000 years post removed by being on this, being, on, being in on this, on this, this, this blood, having this blood. Um, how can I say? Establishes being with us or being believed on. Now, do you just think about the blood? Do you just, and then you got it? No, that's not how it works. Let's grab it real quick. Uh, and before I do that too, I want to get this word purge. As you see right here, the word for purge is to free from defilement of sins and from faults, to consecrate by cleansing. Yeah, it says to free from guilt of sin. To pronounce clean in a Levitical sense, which the Levit Levites is, the, is are Israelites who will spill blood for other Israelites' sin, forgive it's for them to be what forgiven. So just really making this clear that yeah, this is a real thing you want to be in on. But the point is to show how is it just us simply thinking about the blood. All right. Make sure I got everything. Remission. Remission says what? Forgiveness or pardon of sins. 
letting them go as if they never had been committed. Remission of the penalty. Release from bondage or imprisonment. Exactly. Which that goes into, uh, I want to say that's Isaiah in the 51st chapter, I believe. Pretty much where it goes on talking about how um, the Lord, he has opened the prisoners. Basically the gospel. All right. The gospel. Let's see if I can pull that up really quick. And Isaiah. Isaiah. So I just want to get it because it's really uh, I'll give you a complete understanding of why it's important, too. All right. And that this is all true. You know, the, who this blood was spilt, spilt for and what was his, its purpose. Isaiah 61 and 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That, that's what Yahweh Shah went on and did. He spoke to the meek. He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. He was speaking the gospel. Now, who were these meek? So this is the, this is the prophecy. This is the first mention of these of these things. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening going right back to what we just read in Hebrews. And the, the pistol is called Hebrews for a reason. It says, and the, open, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord Yahweh, right? So that's how that explains the, well, this is still a thing 2,000 years uh, post spilling of the blood. Yeah. It was it was a time of when uh, pretty much the forgiveness would be accepted for this particular blood that was spilled. For all Israelites, to the point, it'll be like we never sinned. We'll be able to be redeemed and bought back, right? Which is when your house shall ultimately come back and get those who truly, what, have believed in his blood. Which we get into, it says, as far as how you do that, it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that more, that's the point. To appoint unto them that more in Zion, that's the Israelites. Let's read it in the NLT. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord, the Lord Yahweh, by some Yahweh Shai, has planted for his own glory. See, and it goes on to say what? And they will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they had been deserted for many generations. See, so that blood was, this, this is how it's supposed to be going. So that blood was spilled 2,000 years ago. We are 2,000 years post the spilling of that blood and still in process of claiming that blood, showing that blood, having that blood as, as, as our sacrifice to Yahweh. Right to be forgiven. Now, how do we do it? Because it's, it's we know that it's a difference between how it actually was, as far as the Lord requiring blood, because He actually required physical blood to be seen or shown. So, yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, He spilt it. He had it to be uh, us to spill it, if you will. He had it spilt for our forgiveness two thousand years ago, but that was which was physically, just like. The, the 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 different um sacrifice sacrificial animal animals blood were physically uh spilt and seen and shown so for one this would have had to happen this spilling of this man's blood our our, our you know our big brother how was shy but um like i said like how did it carry over the two thousand years uh post Ain't no statute of limitations on it, on the forgiveness of it, obviously. <laughs> but it says, foreigners will build, will be your servants. They will feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. So this is 100% saying that this blood will be spilt um, for the Israelites. This this Israelite blood, being Yahweh, people call Jesus Christ, 
being spilled for the Israelites and only for them. Because when you read on and mention, this is the, the this is where that comes from. This is the prophecy of it. And when you go on to read this, you see what? That no one else that is in the Israelite is going to be dealt with in this matter. Because he wasn't sent to bind up anybody else. Those that, because they weren't brokenhearted. They weren't captive. They didn't need forgiveness for sins. Uh, Cause they never necessarily offended against the Lord per se. Cause the, you know they they wasn't given the standard. You know the law was given to the Israelites. That's why he said you only have I known of all the families of the earth. And meaning he he only showed us. He only gave us the standard. He showed us right and wrong. You know he gave us the law. That's why he said and he goes on to say. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquity. You know. So these people are going to be judged as being, they're going to be deemed as being wicked too, but they're not, they haven't been held or punished in, way in which we, the way we have because we actually was told and shown we, we uh, knew better in a sense. All right, we were supposed to know better. All right, so this is not, this blood being spilled is not for you other people. So I just want to say that through the spirit. Now, so that's what this Hebrews 9 is going into. And almost all things are by the law purged, 9 and 22, purged with the blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. That's what that, that, this is what that was going into. Or that Isaiah 61 is what this is going into. It's where it is coming from. Is what is is the breakdown of what this is leading to. You know, where that came from. Now, you are to obviously just believe on this blood. So when you go back, let me pull it up to Colossians 1 and 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So how do we have the blood? Do you just believe on it? Do you just say you have the blood and then you, you deem this it, such, you know? And also, how does this work? All right, this is uh, Genesis 9 and 4. It says, I'm going to actually get Leviticus 17 and 11. For the life of the flesh is the blood. That's how. The reason, and this is it's manifest, it's, it's two birds and one stone. This is how, and this is why. This is how, meaning for the life of the blood, for the life, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. So, the why this works or the how this, this or the why this works is because Yahweh Shah's life is what the blood actually is. We believe and, and, and so and the how this works is by believing in Yahweh Shah's life and living Yahweh Shah's life. That means you got the blood. Let's prove that real quick. This is Colossians 3. And one, if ye then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of God. All right. And I'm going to read that in the NLT. Living the new life is what this is, is, is headed as. Since you have been raised to new life with Hamashiach. What new life is that? Let's get it. This is St. John 1 and verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Yeah, and that's talking about who? Yahweh Shah. All right. This is in the NLT. The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. So it's his life. So living the new life. It says, if he then, back in the KJV verse 1, if he then be, be risen with Hamashiach, seek those, seek those things which are above where Hamashiach sit on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Hamashiach and, and, and the Father. Right? Where Hamashiach in power. It says when, when Hamashiach, who is our life, see, when Hamashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So that's that blood. And the NLT, and when Hamashiach, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. 
So when we go back to Leviticus 17 and 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, which is why we have what? Redemption through the blood. Colossians 1 and 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Yeah, the redemption through what? His life. Because this says Leviticus 17 and 11, for the life is the flesh in the blood. And I have given it to you and upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that make an atonement for the soul. The, the blood is a, is a life. See? That's it. So you basically take your house shots. You claim your house shots life. You believe on a life he lived as being true. You know, as being right, as being the way, as being what the heavenly father wanted. Okay. Yeah. And you prove it by living that life. As I, as, as I said, it says. Verse one. First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things write out unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the righteous. Why? That through that blood, because his blood was spilled. Right? And how do you so you gotta believe in that blood, meaning live his life. But let's prove it. It says, and he is the propitiation for our sins and for not ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That means all the Israelites. All right. Not those that just know it or take heed to it now right it says and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith i know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him see that so you got it that means living what yeah, living what yahweh shah told us to live living how he lived it says he that said he, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of god perfected hereby we know that we are in him he that said he abided in him all, himself also to walk even as he walked. In the NLT, it says, I'm going to start at verse 5. But, but, who, but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. This is how we know that we are living in him. Those who say this, the point, those who say they live in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, or you, or I believe in the blood, should live their lives as Yahweh Shai did. That's why, you're right, because you can't just say you 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 believe in the blood, the life he did. You prove you believe you believe in the life he did by living the life that he he lived. You prove you prove that's the life that Yahweh that Yah, that the Heavenly Father wanted man to live. He was the Son of God by following that. That's why we're called his disciples. You know? That's 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 why it says in Ephesians. Woo. Yeah, man. That's that's why it says in Ephesians 5 and, 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 ten, and 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. See that? And you jump up to verse 2. I'm going to start at 1. Be ye followers of, of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah as dear children. Okay? Living in the light in the NLT. Imitate Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Going into what you his children by believing in that blood. It says also and all and walk in love as Hamashiach also have walked, have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering that it is, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. And you jump down, you read through all of this, but I'm gonna jump to the point. In six, let no man deceive you with vain words. Right? For because of these things. Come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. That's why the scriptures say, a man, uh, pretty much, you're not justified by, you got, oh, be hearers of the words and not doers, be doers of the words and not hearers, hearers only, because you what? You deceive your own self. So let no man deceive you by saying he just simply believe, and don't deceive your own self by saying you believe. You believe in that blood. Meaning you believe in the life of Yahweh Shah as being right, the will, you know what I'm saying? That Yahweh Shah, uh, that that yeah, that uh the Heavenly Father wants for us to be forgiven by living it. Not by just saying it. And that's how you believe in the blood. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's basically that, man. And that's why it says in verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And then you jump down to the point, verse 17, it says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So there it is in the NLT. Make, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. So he wants us to what? Believe in his blood simply to what? Be forgiven and to overcome this devil. All right. The so-called white man in this system. So I basically hit everything. I had a couple more points in here, but that's basically it. Colossians 1 and 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. There it is. That's how. Because if you live, how you how shall I live is impossible. Let me get, get that. It's impossible, as it says, life in the spirit. Exactly. Because it's spiritual blood. It's not physical blood. See that? But the blood is what? The life. That's why Yahweh Shah said in St. John 6 and 63, uh, the words that I speak unto you, they are life and they are spirit. See that? And these same words is how we're cleansed. Right? We're, we're held guiltless. And these words is what? Life, as he says in St. John 6 and 63. These words cleanse us also, making it able to be possible. That's St. John in the 15th chapter. Now ye are clean through the word in which I have spoken unto you. You know, and how? Romans 8 and 1. For there, there is therefore no com, there is therefore now, now no condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach, Yahushua, meaning you have that blood. Who believe in that blood? Who walk? Not after the flesh, but after the spirit, meaning you walk in his image. You walk according to the words that he gave us, the lifestyle that he lived, which is a perfect one, which he couldn't be condemned. Yahweh wasn't condemned, right? He was just used as a sacrifice because he was perfect. Remember, you can't sacrifice to the Heavenly Father a blemish, sacrificial animal. Lamb, a blemished lamb. It has to be a perfect lamb, you know, and that's how it works. So that's how you believe in the blood of Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this has been edifying, you know, make sure I just touched everything, you know. So it's a bunch you could say, Genesis 9, you know, but that's it. Call them like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Shalom.